Harding University is delighted to bring this webinar for you all in cooperation with our colleagues from Philips Lighting Academy India. We bring to you Honorable Dr. B.V. Doshi for an exclusive webinar to take us on a journey wherein we will experience various nuances of light as an intrinsic ingredient of space. He intends to invigorate various aspects and nature of light which designers have forgotten. He believes that human being can bring in light by curating architecture and heighten the overall experience of space. He also believes in fluidity of this medium and its interaction with architecture. He would take us through great examples and his inspirations apart from his buildings to illustrate the overall experience. Dr. Doshi in his own practice and principles has put light as one of the prime virtues of design amongst space, form and volumes. Let us hear him out and benefit the most from the architect himself and be illuminated with light and architecture alike. In recognition to his distinguished contribution as a professional and as an academician, Dr. Doshi has received several international and national awards and honors including Padma Shri Government of India 1976 and France's highest honors for arts, the Officer of the Order of Arts and Letters 2011. I must uh, thank Phyllis Lighting Academy for giving me this chance to talk about a most essential aspect of architecture, that is light. I think it's a very good idea to continue these studies, have these webinars, and also discussions on light, as well as architecture, as well as what we can do with architecture, so that in our own practice or in our own life, we can also grow and learn something about how to have quality of space, quality of the condition, which can be unique to us, which can be favorable to us. When this question came of talking about light, two images came to my mind, and I thought those were most important, because it was for the first time I realized when I visited the blind school, and I recognized that what about the eyes? I never thought, because when since we childhood, we take our organs for granted. And we don't know what they mean and what is the implication of that in our life and in conceiving or experiencing the world around. And if you don't have the eyes, what would be then? What would be our condition? And I think if we just think that, then if I say that it is an exalting experience, suddenly we realize that, yes, it is unique and it is the most enchanting thing that we have, the eyes. And I think light and eyes are the same. If we did not have the eyes and if we did not exercise the eyes, we will not know what joy or what variation is. And I think this is something like moods. Moods, you know, which are there in which, you know, we celebrate. We are in good mood and we enjoy ourselves. Similarly, when we have the eyes, there is an inner sense of the eyes, inner sense of softness, lightness, hardness, depth, shallow, all kinds of mood that we have. I think the source is lighter. And breathing really in a sense. When we start constructing the building, we make walls, but the only thing when we start doing is the opening. The moment the opening is made, the outside light not only comes in, but a tree which is far away is seen by us. Similarly, the darkness disappears, or if the sunlight comes, the rays of the sun move inside and we begin to see the space in very different ways. Same wall, but when the light shifts, we see it reflected. When it goes beyond, that we begin to see as if there is a dimension to the space. So space and light are integral. Both become as one. And I think as an architect, this is our first lesson. That how do we look at the space? But why we are looking at the space? 
how do we really heighten that through the use of light? And maybe in order to explain this further, I would like to show you some slides which have been jointly collected by the Phillips Academy and myself. This dia is the one which we have to celebrate our holidays, the biggest holidays, the holidays of light, festival of light. What is that? It takes away the darkness, it brightens the space, and all of our faces glow. And I think this is really what I mean of a window and the light outside and the wall that is next to it. Similarly, the festival of the holy, the sacred fire, it is not meant only to take the garbage and waste and burn it, but it is to celebrate and say how clean and how wonderful our life is going to be. So music and dance becomes an extremely important and we celebrate the harvest. So festivals are like this. Similarly, the rainbow suddenly it appears in the sky and we can't measure the scale. The closer we go, the farther it goes. And then there are seven colors. So where does one see this? If we did not have the eyes, we would not see. If we don't have the window, we will not see. If we don't have the terrace, we will not see. If we don't have the veranda, we would not see. So I think if you see now the space which modulates inside and outside by extensions, by openings, is really telling us to bring in all the experiences which are outside. This is really the step well in Ahmedabad, five stories below ground. And when you go there, you don't see anything but a parapet and a flat ground. And as you enter there, and as you see in the slide of the left, left side, there is a little entry, you see a courtyard and a glimpse of light, and you start descending. And when you go into the descent, slowly when you come to the end of the fifth floor, that is five floors below ground where there's water. You know, in monsoon, the water goes up, and in summer, the water goes down. So every time in monsoon, the water is next to the steps. And gradually, as it descends, you go down, and there is an honor in the water, the sacredness of water, the rarity of water, and also honoring the kind of light and the procession that we get in. So light now, not only building, but architecture and light are all married together in one integral whole in which we talk of celebration, we talk of movement, we talk of gathering, we want to joining and honoring the sacred thing that is water. But the moment you go down, and I took this picture long back, as you go down, suddenly you look up, and in that opening, because it doesn't have the roof exactly in the same place as the well below, and you see the sky. You turn around and you see the entrance, and you look up and you see the sky. How does one know this? What has happened to us inside? All our attitudes, all our moods change. We connect the heaven and the earth together. And it is not that way, but if you have your own house, this is our own house I did long back, 60 years ago. A window, I had not noticed, you know, that the window on the west side could in the evening, if you open the window, it would give the light on the sofa, you know, on the bed. And suddenly I imagine to see the textures and the colors and the fabric, which otherwise I would not have noticed. I think light makes us notice things which are invisible or we have not noticed. Similarly, in the Corvizier's Chapel, you would see that he has not used the light on the window at the side, but he made the windows on the top. So the movement, it depends upon, for an architect, what is it that he wants to highlight? What is it that he wants to exaggerate or make them appear? And how he would like some things to play second, second role. 
and here they go, the okila is almost the light there comes, you know, from the top and it covers the sides. So when you see light, when you see window on a flat surface, when you see the window on a round surface, when you see the window, you know, which is in the hollow, the negative surfaces, you begin to perceive the modulation of space. And I think modulation of space and light again go together. This is again a part of the house, and when I designed the house, they were considering few issues. One of them was climate, the heat, and the coolness, and therefore indirect light. So all the windows which are there are wood, so if you close them, there is no light, and the only light that comes up is from the indirect light. One on the left, you see there is a small strip on the left, on the top, that is indirect light coming from the ceiling, touching the reflecting the ceiling. The other one on the right gives you the light which is reflected on the white wall and on a mirror there. So what it does is direct and indirect light, soft and glowing light. I think these are all different variations. And I think those variations are very important for us to, to change our mood, to change our feelings, to make us ponder, make us wonder. I think light does that, but question is, as architects, how do we make then those inert matters like walls, surfaces, windows, columns, floors, how can we bring life into them? And this way, what was not noticed is now noticeable. Now it is alive. The building, that space becomes alive. You want to notice it. It's not just the dark space. Next. This is the basement of my house in which, you know, I have a little shrine. But the most important thing is not only the shrine there, but why the shrine came? Because the room was dark and I had these two windows on two sides. And early morning when I saw the light glowing in, the space became sacred. And I think the sanctity happens by the way the light comes, the way it reflects, and the way it enhances the volume and the characteristics of the space. So what it means is, like us, can the light or the element that we use in architecture animate architecture? Can the building speak to us? Can the space talk to us? And can it tell us about volumes, surfaces, textures, colors, in a different mood altogether, compared to the same room without a roof? Imagine this room without a roof and a natural light coming in, it would be all even. It would never modulate. Next. It happened that there is one window on the eastern side and I had never noticed, but one day I realized that the light, early morning light came in and you almost feel the heavens have entered the room and the space has become sacred. I think that is the wonder of night. Mind you, it is also possible to Simulate this through today's technology. And that's what Felix does, or that's what other people do. And I think, therefore, we have to look at light as a tool, light as an element, light as an external thing. But then we say, in today's technology, supposing you are in a room which is crowded, houses, there's no way. Can this happen? And I think that is possible. Like what we do when we see cinema. It has to be in a dark space. So dark spaces also can be lighted. They can also be brought into life. And I think this is something which we have to learn. That in today's world, we don't have to make only glass buildings, but we can also make solid buildings and glass buildings and something in between and make that building speak of another world which has not been seen or experienced. And that's what the job of an architect is. Next. So this is again the same room and same building. I'm showing you why, because in my house, which was done almost 50, 60 years ago, the light and the garden and the woods continuously change. And I say that architecture is a living entity. It has its own life. And it absorbs, it talks, it talks to the surrounding, it talks to the climate, it talks to the space. And I think Light is the voice. So light is not just an element, light is the voice. 
and that's why I said dia also means that it is bringing for us voice and memories. Next. And in a normal day, you do get a general light, and therefore you can see how many ways the light gets modulated. If you look at top, the concrete wall is there. There's a reflected light, but very gentle. Then there is another shadow of you, shadowless surface. Then there is the floor, and then there's the window and the outside place. Now, isn't there a dialogue between all these elements? Are they not talking as if, as if it's a community of light? They're all light. Lights are living elements. They talk to each other. I am shadow. I am light. I am heavy. I am bright. I am moody. All these things can be there and therefore we as architects must learn or must know and practice that don't ignore light. Don't ignore opening. Remember, they are more alive than what we think. Next. This is the Museum of Indology, which has a top light, an indirect light, and around below there's another light. And it is also inspiration from the step well. But gradually you go down and you get another world. So attraction is very important. How do you pull people with the magnet? Then light becomes a magnet. Light is not just an element, it's a magnet. Next. And then there are many ways that the magnet can be placed. It's like a symphony. You can play the game. You can have different kinds of design elements by which the light can be seen in many ways, indirectly, directly, reflected, and a rhythmic pattern can be created. So light also can dance. Light also can have a dialogue. Next. And then in a library, which is partly in the basement of Institute of Indology, there is a natural north and south light because you need light, but you don't need the sun rays coming in and you need a constant temperature. So one begins to then discuss about the movements of the sun. And when you look at the movements of the sun, you begin to see how they cast shadows, how it gives you reflection, how it gives light, and how it enhances the quality of the object in which you are surrounded. So, Light is not, light is like air, you don't see it. Unless we have the dust, we can't see the rays of the sun. And I think this is something which we must know. And therefore, we will revert that this is something which is intangible, ineffable. Next. And when the evenings come, the shadows are cast. So, architecture then plays the game. It's a dance between architecture and elements. There is a dance between the light and the parapet. Because they are talking and when the sun rays change, it changes and they say, look what I am doing. Other one says, why dances like this? So they dance with one another. Then there is a shadow and then there is a game of play. I think it's a living thing where they animate things. Buildings get animated. And if we are there, we share that animation. And if the child is there, I am very sure children would dance with the changing of shadows. And then you put little elements like this, you know, you can put the monsoon, you put the uh, chuck, you know, something to shade. But then when the light comes, that ordinary thing becomes extraordinary. It's almost like diamond. It's almost like filigree. It's the jali that we make. That's why jalis are made. And then when the sun rays change and the, when the mood changes, the quality of light changes. You almost feel the fragility. So sometimes you can measure even the kind of thickness the light has. You can touch that area, you know. Am I touching the air? So am I touching the light? I am feeling the touch now. I think that is important with the light. Next. And the same windows, if you see in the normal way, flat, they just tell you about the rhythms of the place. So how angle, location, space, and relation with the building elements, light can happen and light can do. Now, mind you, this is without any external support. If you use this, if you understand this, then you can say, how can I do that when it is dark? 
that is the time you can look at saying how technology, how the new techniques can help me to give me these modes, not during the daytime, at night, as well as whenever I wish. So now, if you know how the technology is going, technology can become a tool which you can use 24 hours of the day, and you don't have to depend then on an outside condition. Next. And you can see here one shot of three rooms here, one going down the steps with a light, bright light, the other one on the left and the third one on the right, and where the window has a slightly light there, you know, on my partner, Rajiv. Now, all these things are like a cinema, like a movie. So, animation, mood, dialogue, distinctions, and changes. It's like literature, you are read the book and you read the passages, and then you could see all these episodes happening simultaneously. So one can, when you make an opening, I'm trying particularly to the architect, when you make them, do it in such a way, imagine the word rhythm, dance, and orientation. So if you can look at those things, then you will, you and your breathing will start and become a dancer. And it will give you the dances perpetually, different seasons in different ways, different hours again, different ways. Next. And so this is the kind of light you get in my own room and I always say that if the window was straight, you would have got hard face. But if the window is not there and you get reflected light, the person across looks softer, gentler. And I think if you want to take a photograph of your friends or your family members, remember you should take them in indirect light. And that time your window should not be seen. And then you will find that they all become your friends. And in our studio, the only way we could put light was, this is buried partly on the ground. So I took north light. North light is a constant light, constant reflection, constant color. And that is what it is. And also one can see the clouds, one can see the rain, one can feel this. I think this is something which one does that you want people not to see you and you want only be part of nature. That is why caves were made before and the underground buildings. Next. But then in other days in the afternoon, you get actual natural light, very clear, even light. So there are many ways you can have sharp light, hard light, indirect light, soft light, even light. All these moves if you make then won't you say that your building has become alive? Otherwise you would say, no, my building is one doesn't talk to me at all. So dialogue is very important. The animation is important in architecture. But we are not taught to talk about it. Next. So not light and other lights, moves. Then in the evening you can get only glimpses of light. I think this is very important for eyes. Remember, eyes need exercise. Like ears need different sound. Eyes are extremely delicate. They need different illumination levels because then only they get their exercise. So if you have even light, I think it is not a very good thing. It's like even sound. It's like even the breathing. Now, biologically, a changes in light system is very important. And today, luckily, the technology is available so that you can change that, you can control that, it can happen. Next. This is the Gufa I did for Hussein, a friend. And in that challenge, I said, I will create something which cannot be measured. So building can become an unmeasurable element. It can give you variety of light simultaneously. And it can make, make you feel the volumes which otherwise you don't. The curvature and the light has a great play. The surfaces and the light, they always dance together. And their dialogue is very different. Depending upon the angle in which it hits. You don't see that angle, you don't see the rays, but you can see it. Next. And then if there are shadows, these are the shadows of the grill, which is the door, and the sun hits the grill, and then makes these pictures, which continuously move. 
and suddenly the column which is there which you see here across on both two slides they when the sun would move even those would move so static becomes dynamic light has that virtue it can become dynamic and it can give you different tonalities tonalities are there surfaces are there it heightens everything so volume surfaces rhythms levels all that is constantly articulated the way the light is put in natural light is put in opening the da and i think this is something which then architecture animates in architecture that is own ways of saying i am this i am that in that all over the world today in the movies and in our ramps and other places where you see these fashions we are talking about only this the quality of how modulation takes place how the moods are created how the tones are created and how you can see people or places in another way they are not sharp it's all soft and i think one of the quality of light is the softness next and if you put artificial light it gives you completely different image the same image can be completely changed so if one can want to do in a building the natural one and the other one is designed you have the opportunity to do that and in fact heritage buildings all the monuments other buildings get this kind of a places where you get this animation so you have then in the same city or same house or in the same room various ways of playing and you can change that mood all the time so theater you don't need to go to but you have a theater with a press of a button next and the rhythms shadows proportions everything can be seen this is in the iim in bangalore the institute of management in bangalore next stones locally available common but when you put like this it looks like a fabric because the light hits it in a different way so one can then the moment you start learning about light the moment you start learning about how many ways it can be manipulated with sunlight or other light then gradually you would know that there is no material which is not so good but glass will not do this what we think today the highly polished surfaces won't do this it is like the wrinkles on our skin and i think there is something called grace and i think grace in architecture can only come through natural light modulation of light and how many ways you can make opening how many ways because suddenly you are walking in the same place and the sun has changed and you have not changed your position you know the time has changed so it connects with time it connects with local time it connects with the movement of time and it gives you a another image and you don't feel you are in the same place it takes away the bold and gives you place to think again and ponder next how many ways rhythms come this is all in one place you know if you just make this thing you walk into open and incidentally in this place you will never walk at the same place second time because the sun is never there the same way so can you go to a place where you can go any time but say i have never been there before it is only here you can say like that because the light and the buildings are just a pose and they are playing a game together in which the sun is not in your hands the building is so the one plays the game the other one is static but yet the game is not the same so casting shadows is very important in hot climate i think you know in a hot temperate climate if you can't have the shadows you will be bored it's almost like landscape it's almost like creating trees and adding things and especially when the landscape changes and the walls change the windows change shadows change you feel you are not in the same place so it's like reading books reading novels the passage of time goes on and then you begin to really accept that time and the same place you walk 
but it is not the same. So animation is very important. It's like walking on a street. When there is a crowd and when you are silent, I think the street is not the same. Because some place the windows are open, some place is not. People may not be there, may be there. And I think that is what life is. So is architecture alive? Can we make it alive? Or is architecture a dead place? I think it all depends upon how you look at people, space, climate, and architecture, and lifestyle. Next. This is Korea's famous building, you know, the museum. And I think it's fantastic the way the light and the texture and the scale and the patterns happen simultaneously. And I think this is something which one has to look at. And I think one begins to wonder what it is. So one doesn't need a canvas or a painting in the house. A photograph like this is good enough. Next. And then, very often, we want to isolate ourselves and be in another mood. And at that time, you want to concentrate. And in that dark space, then, how do you create that light condition which would heighten those areas that you want to focus? So meditative light. Now, this is possible through the present technology and which today we use in our lighting systems, etc. But it can be manipulated, but here it is controlled, and therefore, here you are simulating as and when you desire. And I think this is an advantage of today's world, that we can create replication of nature in a different way. And we can continue and enhance it so that we are playing the music the way we like to hear. So you can individualize, you can personalize. And you can create this. Next. And then, of course, you can see this slide, you know, which is one side. There's a new building, you know, which is the Louis Vuitton store, and the other one is IIM of Louis Khan. Simple openings, but look at the way the light modulates. One is design light, where the lighting is at the back. Other one is the same natural light, but the way it comes and reflects and glows there. I think the kind of what you call the uh, mood, mood of the place, ethereal kind of place. You feel that, you know, that maybe the, the fairy tale will just now come from the place. I think all these things are very, very important in architecture and for architects. We have normally not look at this, but I think if we all carefully talk about light and architecture, I think then we will be able to think about what are the openings and how we make the openings and then how we can see that they are daytime and nighttime because the one which is on the left is talking also about the night. And I think that highlight at night is very different from daytime. I think these are the subtle things of knowing how do you really work with night, day, season and the clouds around, etc. Next. And then there are old buildings, and how do you highlight them? Public buildings, how do you see that you can locate them from a far away distance? How do you animate them so that festivals can be talked about? How do we make them as that they are left in the heritage building? But you really know that if this was a building in the daytime, it would look silent. But now it is speaking. It is talking about things that it is there. I am there to come. So I think these things are important, that we have to animate them, we have to heighten them, we have to give them their due importance. Then only we will start thinking about the value of the heritage. Next. So coming back to that Sarkhej, uh, the Adalas, uh, the wow, this is how the natural light is. But there is a rhythm of that concrete structure and the depth. So you can see this tunnel. But now look the way the natural artificial light happens. Next. And see the whole thing changes. So you have many ways to play the game. It all depends upon how you light them. But it is possible to make it for you, for your own choice. So architects have greater responsibilities when they do surfaces, when they do design of structure, when they put columns there. What do they do? I think they all become alive. 
and how do you make them alive how do you make them have create dialogue between themselves and with the visitor i think is very important so these lessons only come because light is a heart and soul of reading and that we cannot forget next and the greatest example is this pantheon built several centuries ago and one ocular there but i tell you when i went there in this light which came here nobody would cross the light and the sun would move so when you come there the light is moving there's no other light only that light reflects the whole ceiling and it is the most amazing building ever built because the, uh, the emperor wanted him to put a temple without god and he made this with only sunlight so this is the most sacred building for us as architects fantastic structure fantastic plan but the miracle is the light and i have gone there two times and every time i have not crossed nobody crosses that light on the floor so sacred it is not even fire it doesn't need to anything you just don't want to cross so light when you look can you put in the light your fingers in and see try next so this is actually another building not the same but very different light and i would say that you can you can see how not good lighting what can it the best buildings can become so one has to be very careful when one chooses artificial light and i think that time one has to be extremely sensitive because one has to go back and visit those buildings which are made naturally and i think that is where then we would start learning from heritage next and of course the stadium like this you know which is in china it was built long back very controversial but very beautiful structure but i think that lighting has made it almost like a thin cage and suddenly you begin to wonder what kind of a building is this so it can do miracles like that next and of course here you know in hyderabad this building and lucknow yeah magamata lucknow imam bara and all those old buildings we like but i think in this kind of light one needs to then see if you do from archaeological survey or standard lighting system but there is as you saw the earlier building i would say that this is an example where we should know how not to do things and what should we do next and of course industrial buildings factories other things which need natural light and save natural light so you need to have proper orientation if you are dependent on the natural light but if you are not dependent on the natural light then you have to go to artificial but you can see here the curvature that have been made into the roof so that the light reflected light comes in and diffuses the place next and this is of course the uh, a trade trade fair you no know? this is yeah in the hall of nations in delhi most famous and most important building of our century you know the after independence and it was done by my friend raj rewal and char uh, the mahendra raj who was the main structural engineer but how light and structure and span can be done there is no artificial light in this building but it is now you have the geometry itself gives us a sense of space next and then of course you can see these big metropolitan cities and at night how do they become alive suddenly you wake up and you begin to see the wonder and as the night goes on and some people switch off the lights and some people add on light i think it plays its own dance so light has many things at many scales at the smallest scale to the city scale and the urban scale and i think today our advantages are the new technologies i think why i was interested in talking about this is because in today's world we have very large scale large number and dense architectural buildings and i think those buildings need to animate those buildings need to be seen in day night night time on holidays on other days and we must talk about them as celebration and how do we celebrate them and in that i think the new technologies we must fulfill 
and I don't know as yet, but I am very sure slowly the academy is going to train people to advise and participate with architects. And they will guide us and they will also learn something from us or from the heritage. And I think this is why I agreed to be part of it. But there are a few more examples which we should see. This is another example where you can create these artificial uh, sun and suddenly you see how the light changes and how people will change. You will see the mood. When the light is of a certain kind, people want to relax. People want to be lazy. People, because they don't know what has happened. It is so even light and the quality, the color, the mood and the kind of volume, the way the variation in the light is. One doesn't know. It's almost like the evenings, early, late evenings in a faraway place and in a silent place. So everybody says, let me relax, let me be quiet. So that's why in temples, in, temples, in places where you want to meditate or the church that you saw in the beginning, I think the light has been played an important role, the stained glass, the glass, etc. Next. This is how it changes. They're almost having the sunset. And I think that's the end of the place. Thank you. Yeah, last one, I must tell you that all this is possible now. And as my friend here tells me that Philips and other companies are doing this well, now they are taking this emotion that I mentioned all along, will be done and recreated through their help by their assistance and learning of changing the light and the mood. And so you can create your own world in your own way and be happy. Thank you.